Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining. Um, I'm Michaela Dwarshus. I'm one of the Digital Health and Quality Improvement Officers here at Central and Eastern Sydney PHN. Uh, and today I'll be running through data cleansing um, in general practice using your data extraction tools, and I'll also discuss quality improvement. Um, but firstly, I'll just take a few minutes to run through some housekeeping and um, some current PHN programs and upcoming events. Uh, so Central and Eastern Sydney PHN acknowledges the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of this nation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians and sovereign people of the land across which we work. We recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community and pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. And I'd like to extend that respect to any Aboriginal colleagues joining us today. Uh, so uh, during this webinar, um, if you've got a question, feel free to click the Q&A button below. Um, you can type in the Q&A box and press send. Uh, you can also uh, check to send anonymously if you don't want your name attached to the question. Um, please note that the chat function has been disabled as well as participant audio and video. Um, this session will be recorded and will be sent to participants. Um, and at the end, it'd be great if you could please complete an evaluation form that will be sent. Okay, so some upcoming events. Um, Thursday, the 21st of March, um, Public Health Care Services Radius Clinic at Hazelhurst. Um, hear from um, service providers on care plans available, assessment options, treatment and referral pathways for GPs um, to improve patient outcomes and access to multidisciplinary care. Um, Thursday, the 4th of April, ADHD in practice um, series, identifying, assessing and diagnosing ADHD patients. And on Monday, the 8th of April, um, CPR skills in general practice at Ramsgate RSL. Um, and these uh, CPR workshops are held monthly around the area. So um, please check our website um, for further uh, education opportunities. Okay, so the uh, CES PHN's Mental Health uh, Services Directory will assist you to find um, a mental health service for any patient using the advanced filters and wait time function. Uh, you can also filter by AI level um, of care required. Um, if you've got uh, any questions, you can contact the IAR team at um, the email address on the page um, or on our website. Um, we also fund Head to Health, um, which is a free support service. Um, you don't need a referral or an appointment um, and the contact details are there and patients can drop into the Canterbury Head to Health Centre. Um, we've also got the Telehealth Psychiatry Service. Um, provides free consultations with psychiatrists. Um, the inquiries can be made at the email address on the page um, and there's a website there to make a referral. And quite exciting, um, Maroubra, one of the Medicare urgent care clinics is opened. Uh, it's open seven days a week. Uh, it's uh, there to uh, help reduce pressure on our local hospital and emergency departments. Um, you can see the list of conditions suitable to be seen at the urgent care clinic on um, the website um, and know that a discharge summary will always be sent back to the patient's usual GP. Uh, and another um, initiative started is My Medicare. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, it's the new voluntary patient registration model. Um, it aims to strengthen the relationship between patients and their GPs um, and it's free uh, and the digital health team can help, uh, help you register. Um, it, you can email the digital health at cesphn.com.au email address if you'd like assistance with this. Um, we also provide GP Can Share. So this is a service aimed to strengthen integration between cancer specialists, community services and GPs. Um, and the CNCs coordinate patients care and provide GPs with regular updates. So there's more information on our website about that. Okay, thank you for that. So um, first, I'd just like to uh, discuss who we are and how we can help. So the Digital Health and Quality Improvement Team, um, we support general practice, aged care, allied health and specialists. Um, and there's a wide range of digital health programs we can help you with, but some, in, um, some programs include um, PenCS and Polar, which is what we'll be running through today. Um, we can help with My Health Record, PIPQI, Lumos, Secure Messaging, electronic scripts and telehealth um, and yeah, a wide range of other uh, digital health um, programs. So uh, the activities we'll be running through today are all part of quality improvement in general practice. So quality improvement is foundational to contemporary high-performing primary care. 
It can improve uptake of evidence-based practices for better patient outcomes, better professional development and better system performance. So the Practice Incentives Program um, with Quality Improvement Incentive, or PIPQI, um, is a patient to general practices that participate in quality improvement to improve patient outcomes and deliver best patient care. So under the PIPQI incentive, general practices work with their local PHN to undertake um, continuous quality improvement activities through the collection and review of practice data on specified improvement measures. So each quarter practices are required to participate in at least one um, quality improvement activity um, to meet the requirements for PIPQI. Um, the activity can be uh, the same one done over a few quarters if the topic is a big focus, or you could choose to do a new one each quarter. And it doesn't need to be a huge activity. It can be something simple such as data cleansing like we're doing today. Um, simple activities uh, like data cleansing can be run by non-clinical staff members. Um, there is also, with these programs, uh, clinical quality improvement activities that you can conduct, um, but this should be run by clinical staff. And so a great way to monitor and record your quality improvement activities is to use our QI templates that can be found on our website. Um, this is a blank one here, but there's also um, pre-filled templates um, on our website and there's other resources uh, that can help you through your QI journey. Um, these templates serve as great evidence for CPD hours, accreditation and PIP QI. Um, you'll see the first page identifies who is part of the quality improvement team and each person's role and responsibilities. Um, here you can also identify your goal, decide your initial steps and outline how you will track and measure your improvement. Um, and the second page uh, contains a PDSA or a Plan Do Study Act um, template for you to complete. Um, and these, you know, keeping these documents um, in a quality improvement folder um, is a great way to, you know, store your and track your, um, your progress. Uh, so to ensure high quality data, it's essential to maintain your patient database with data cleansing and data quality improvement practices that are designed to keep your health records accurate and current. Uh, your staff should invest in, uh, invest in the time to cleanse your data regularly because maintaining quality records provide better quality data analysis and reporting. Um, better quality data can improve patient care, health outcomes and business potential. And high quality records are easier for patients to access and understand. So with your data extraction tool, we can identify critical missing data um, by generating reports on missing demographic data and missing clinical and accreditation data. So the examples I'll run through today include demographics, ethnicity, alcohol, and BMI recordings. Um, there'll also be more webinars um, this year uh, focusing on other clinical and non-clinical quality improvement activities. Um, so if you, and also if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one session um, to pull these reports, uh, just send an email to digitalhealth at cesphn.com.au and um, your digital health officer will be in touch to organize a session. So what I'll do now, I'll just stop sharing my screen for a moment. Um, and then I will show you Polar and PenCat. Oh. moment. Here we go. All right, so this is Polar. Um, for those of you who haven't used it before or it's been a while, this is the main page that uh, is shown when uh, you log in. Um, and you'll see here as well, there's education and support. So they provide walkthroughs. Um, so it's great to have a look through that when you've got some time. Um, so today, what we'll be um, looking into is a clinic summary. Okay, so this is the dashboard. Um, it's a great way to check um, if you're compliant with PIPQI for the quarter, has some clinical indicators and you can monitor new patients per month then returning patients. Um, and to start off any uh, report, it's always best to click this button here, RACGP and practice active patients. Uh, this ensures that we're only looking at data for active patients and the RACGP definition is um, three visits within two years. So when we click that, you notice that the patient count over here reduced. Um, so now we've got an accurate list of active patients. 
So now we're looking at data quality. So to get this um, dashboard up, you just go to patients and then quality. So that's patients and then quality. We'll let that load. And you get a, a wide range of uh, indicators that you can pull reports on. So, you know, your demographics, like uh, your, your ethnicity, emergency contact, next of kin, um, this is all on this page. Um, so first uh, we can pull a, a list of patients with um, no ethnicity recorded um, in their patient file. So it's, it's quite small, but the writing underneath says click measure to select missing patients. So now that we've got active patients, we can click here for patients who have no ethnicity recorded, and then it'll, it'll reload. And just give it a little moment. Here we go. So then that's reduced this uh, patient count again. Um, and you can also always see what filters you have selected on this top bar here. So you can see we've got RACGP and patient status active and then our ethnicity. So now to, to pull this report, um, all we need to do is double click um, on the patient count here. And there you have it. This is a list of patients um, who have no ethnicity recorded. Um, you can export this to Excel by clicking this button here as well. Um, you can yeah, and then, of course, save it. You can save it to your quality improvement folder. Um, with this list, I know lots of practices like to um, uh, add a reminder in the patient's file um, that ethnicity needs to be recorded. Um, so, you know, it can opportunistically uh, improve um, over the quarter. So once we've printed and saved this and we want to look at another um, filter, we can just go back to quality. And so now what we want to make sure is that we um, remove that ethnicity filter now that we've saved that report. So we just click on this X and we'll see that it goes back. We've just got active patients again. Okay, so, and we can, this this um, page is also great to show how um, you are in line with the RACGP standards. So if we look at alcohol, we can see it's, we only have 53.03 .03 patients recorded with an alcohol um, recorded, uh, and the minimum requirement from RACGP is 75. So again, if we want this report, we just click on um, alcohol here and it'll regenerate a report. Might take a couple of moments. Oh, it's taking a moment. <laughs> there we go. Um, and then we can double click the patient count. And there we have it, another list um, of patients with no alcohol recording. Um, so these are great, easy, uh, quality improvement activities that you can do um, and you can it's good to you know have a look at these every month every quarter however so often and watch your um watch your, how your progress um so we can also and we'll also look at bmi today uh, so i'll just remove that filter okay it just takes a moment to load and we haven't met the RACGP standards as well um, with this one here. It's... It's loading, loading. Never works when you need it to. Uh... Okay, and then you would just click, double click the patient count again, um, and you you have that same report that you can re, um, that you can send to X to Excel. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so this is data cleansing in Polar. Um, you can see there's lots of different uh, areas that you can select and work on um, and keep track. It's a e great page to keep a track of. Um, so now I'll uh, open up uh, Cat Four. Um, so it does look a bit overwhelming to start off with if you haven't looked at it in a while, um, but essentially there's three sections within CAT4 that um, you need to, uh, that you use. So the first thing you need to do is this 
tab on the left, show extracts. This will have a long list of all your previous extracts. So it's best to check when the last one was pulled from your clinical software. Um, if it has been you know, a while, then you just need to run a collect. So this takes a few minutes. Um, and then when it's, when, once it's complete, um, you'll see it pop up here. Um, so all you need to do is just check the date, make sure it's recent or do a new collect and then select that, um, that extract. So once you do that, it'll populate over here. So now we can hide the extracts now that we've got our current data set. And like in um, Polar, uh, it's best to select active um, three visits within two years. Um, and if you click any um, and make any changes within the filter section up here, um, the recalculate button will turn red, which means that you need to press that button and it'll update the data set. So if we go back to active um, three times in two years, recalculate, this is a full list here of our, uh, our patient um, cohort. Um, so uh, what we can do is um, in data cleansing, this is a great way to view your uh, demographics and missing dem demographics. Uh, so here you can pull a report here of uh, patients with no emergency contact or next of kin, and you can actually click this column chooser. If you right click and press column chooser, you can double click and add um, columns. So once you've got a report here and you want to have a look through, you can press um, export. And here you have a patient list. Um, this is demo data, of course, you'll have the actual patient information. Um, and this is quite a long list, but um, you can select um, more, like just emergency contact, for example, if you like. Um, if we look at ethnicity, um, he has a pie graph, you can see the recorded and not recorded. So what we want with ethnicity is a list of patients that are active that have no ethnicity recorded. So to do that, we just need to click on this piece of pie and it pops out there. And then all you need to do is press report and you've got a list of patients here um, with no ethnicity recorded. So it's quite simple. You can print this, you can save it um, as you like. Um, and then as well, once you've finished doing that, like in Polar, you want to remove uh, any filters that you've had already. So if you I've selected this piece of pie and you can see that there's this black dot that, may, you know, you could go to lots of different things and select and you'll see a black dot. So you don't want to have double ups of filters. So that's just a way to check. You can say, oh, there's a dot there. Just remove that uh, and then remove that. So now we're back to just our um, full patient list. Um, so it's same thing with, with alcohol, we want nothing recorded. We can click on that and then click report. And um, voila, we've got a, another matching uh, report there that you can save um, and add to the patient file to, um, to remind staff to add that in. Um, with BMI, uh, you can, this is in measures here. Um, you'll have a full list, like an overview of your BMI. Um, but what we want to see is incomplete BMI recordings. Um, so where we can uh, do this is incomplete. So this shows missing height and weight, missing height and missing weight. Uh, so we want all three of those. Or if you want to break up your uh, quality improvement activity into smaller chunks, then maybe you could select one or the other. Um, but what we want is select all incomplete and then report. And you'll see here that uh, you've got your patient list and it'll tell you here if it's got no data at all, no height or no weight. Um, yep, so that's a great, um, a great one to use. Um, another thing as well, if it is quite a large report and you want to uh, sort of yeah, do it in smaller chunks, what you could do is you could potentially do it by provider. So if you go up here to your filter and you select providers, um, there's there's a list of um, all of all of your doctors, so you could you know deselect some doctors and just maybe do two at a time, and that'll bring your your count down. Um, yes, yeah, so that's um, Cat Four data cleansing in Cat Four. Um, so I also wanted to show you as well. Um, Cat Four have a great uh, website um, for data cleansing. 
Um, they they called um, they're called recipes. Um, they can tell you step by step how to uh, pull reports. There's so many different um, things you can work on. Uh, there's and down the side here, there's a full list of uh, different reports that you can pull. So this is a great one to have as a bookmark. Um, and I also wanted to show as well. Um, let's see our quality improvement um, page on our website. Um, so if you just click under general practice support quality improvement, um, there's lots of different resources that you can use. Um, the uh, quality improvement templates um, that I um, discussed earlier, uh, they can be found here on getting started with PIT QI. So uh, it's it's quite handy because you've got, you know, your blank templates here, some uh, finding duplicate patients, that's more data cleansing, um, instructions for medical director and best practice. Um, they have their own uh, ways you can clean data. Um, and then here we've got uh, the quality improvement measure, the PIPQI quality improvement measure. Um, and then you've got um, levels of uh, quality improvement activities that you can do. Um, and say, so, so we click on this, it actually shows you the quality improvement template um, that has been pre-filled to, um, to help you conduct that activity as you can see here. Uh, okay, so um, that's a short and sweet one for me. Has there been any questions, Kayla? Hey, Michaela. Um, yeah, just been a couple of questions, but specific to the practices. So I'm just following it up now. Yeah. Um, one of the questions was, how do I know if PenCS has been installed in the computer? Uh, usually you would be able to search through um, Windows. So if the bottom left hand corner and you can type in pen and if nothing shows up, then you don't have pen installed. But if you have any um, questions, Regarding that, you can always reach out to the digital health team or your specific digital health officer, and um, they'll be able to help you out further. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I can see one here about should next of kin and emergency contact be two different people? Ideally, yes, it should be two different people. But, you know, in the rare cases, um, there are some people that really only have that one person. Um, so uh, it should both, if it is the same person, then the same page, the same detail should be put both as next of kin and emergency contact just to keep the data um, clean and up to date. Um, but yes, where possible, um, that should be two different people. Okay, so um, if there's any other questions, feel free. I'll just get my slide up again, just to, with our contact details. Um, share. Okay, so this is our um, digital health at cesphn.com.au. Um, if you'd like a personal session with this, if you're not sure if you have Polar or PenCat, sometimes it's been a long time since it's been um, downloaded because it's been around for a while. Contact us. We can um, help you install it. Um, we can update your user um, usernames and passwords for you um, and, yeah, and run training sessions on how to do these. All right, thank you. There's just one more question oh, yeah. in the chat um, asking for my Medicare. How can receptionists get access to add patients? Uh, that's uh, maybe we can follow that up. Um, if yeah, can, maybe we can follow that up after the webinar. Um, so with that's all to do with Proda um, and delegations within Proda. Um, so if the receptionist has uh, an account with um, Proda and has an RA number, then the uh, the owner will have to delegate access um, to that to the receptionist. But yeah, send an email if you want more assistance with this. Just email that digital health email, and your digital health officer can um, follow up with you and help you with that. Thank okay. you. More questions coming through. No, oh, there are more questions. There are lovely. Um, can we identify patients who don't have an email address in file um, as it's a telehealth requirement? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Kaylin, would you know? I'll have a, that's maybe something I can follow up with as well. 
um, with an email address. I don't believe you can do that in CAT4 or Polar, um, but maybe best practice or medical director might be able to have, uh, might have this um, enabled. Okay. Um, if there's any more questions, feel free to send them through. Otherwise, we'll wrap up in a moment. Just a quick short lunch and learn. Um, yeah, and there will, will be more um, webinars coming up um, in the year that dive deeper. So this is a great place to start is cleaning your data. So then when you do um, down the track, uh, pull reports that are more clinical, more in-depth, then, um, you know, you're working with a clean database. All right, um, I'll leave it at that. If any further questions, just email the digital health team and we can follow up with you. Thank you very much.